earlier, we learned about probability mass functions for discrete random variables, and now we will talk about its relative, the cumulative distribution function. So to kind of warm us up, let's think about x being a random variable that takes on integer values. And we have some integers s and t, where s is less than t, and we're wondering what's the probability that s is less than, less than or equal to x and less than or equal to t. Well, if we have x as PMF, p sub x of k, then it's pre pretty easy to find this probability. What we're going to do is take a sum of the PMFs evaluated at k from k equals s up until t. So this sum is going to work out because it's marching up through the integers s through t, and x is an integer valued random variable. So this special case brings us to CDFs or cumulative distribution functions more generally. Um, sometimes it's easy or easier to calculate the probability that a random variable is less than or equal to some value t. If this is true, and we're looking for the probability s is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to t, what we can do is take the probability x is less than or equal to t minus the probability that x is strictly less than x. All right, so if S is strictly less than S, then we can rewrite this probability as the probability X is less than or equal to S minus one. Okay, so we use this to introduce our definition of CDF or cumulative distribution function. So let X be a discrete random variable, and for any P that's a real number, then the probability that X takes on a value less than or equal to T is going to be defined as the cumulative distribution function of x, and the way that we write that is with a capital F sub x of t. And what this represents is the probability that x is less than or equal to t. All right, so it's a way to connect our PMF to, our, to this cumulative probability. So let's see an example. So we're going to go back to the example that we saw before where we roll two fair four-sided dice and then we add up the result of the two dice. So x is the sum of the two faces, and we came up with this PMF in a previous video. Now we want to find x's CDF. All right, and it needs to be defined for all t that are real. So we need to start for values below, or in other words, less than two, and our CDF is also going to need to be defined for values of t greater than eight. All right, so um, for values of p that are strictly less than two, then the probability that x is less than or equal to t is going to be zero, right? Because we cannot get a sum of two dice to be strictly less than two. So the probability that the sum of two dice is strictly less then two is definitely zero. Okay, so this is going to be a thing we see often. The first thing you're going to write down is some value of t, and then say that the CDF for that value of t is equal to zero. All right, next one. Let's choose a value of t that is um, between two and three, and we can allow it to equal two, but let's not allow it to equal three, just so that we can make this CDF as fine as possible. So if we choose 2 less than or equal to t less than 3 strictly, then the probability that x is less than or equal to t is, well, it's just going to be the probability that x is equal to 2, which is 1 16th. Okay, now let's think about a value t that is greater than or equal to 3 and strictly less than 4. All right. So if we have a t in this window, then the probability x is less than or equal to t is going to be the probability that x equals 2 plus the probability that x equals 3. So 1 16th plus 2 16th equals 3 16th. Okay, so we can continue writing this, and when we're, when we're done crunching all the numbers, we can write up our CDF like this. Um, f of x, or the probability that x is less than or equal to t is going to be equal to, well, we said it's zero when we have a value of t that's less than two. 
it's 1 16th when we have a value of p that is greater than or equal to 2 and strictly less than 3. That's what we got right here. Um, our CDF is going to be 3 16th for p greater than or equal to 3 and less than 4. And then we can keep going through this. And then finally, when we get to um, 8 or higher, then our CDF is going to be equal to 1. So we can see as we go through this kind of why it's called a CDF or why it's called a cumulative distribution function. And it's because we're, as we're increasing P, we're accumulating these probabilities. So for this value of P, we just had the probability X equals 2. For the next one, we have the probability x equals 2 plus the probability x equals 3. For the next one, we had the probability x equals 2 plus the probability x equals 3 plus the probability x equals 4, and so on. So we can see that we're accumulating these probabilities as we go. And one more final emphasis. I already said this, but just to emphasize it one more time, note that um, we need to say the probability x is less than or equal to p is equal to 0 and say where our CDF is equal to 0. So in our case here, it's p less than 2. And we need to say where our CDF is equal to 1. And in this case here, it's for p greater than or equal to 8. So do not forget to define your CDF for all values that are real numbers.